Hi, my name is Sarah Gelser, and I'm an Oregon State Representative serving Corvallis and Philomath. In 2005, a little girl from Corvallis, Carly Sheehan, was murdered by abuse. Even though concerns about possible abuse were explored prior to her death, the injuries inflicted on her went undiagnosed. In 2007, we passed Carly's Law to ensure that when first responders across Oregon encounter children with suspicious injuries, those children receive prompt and specialized child abuse medical assessments. The good news is that since it was implemented, Oregon communities have responded. The number of children identified with suspicious injuries has increased dramatically. We are doing a better job of recognizing red flags and signs of potential abuse, and we are intervening. Unfortunately, as turnover occurs and resources dwindle, we know that multidisciplinary teams, or MDTs, struggle to ensure that Carly's Law is understood and that it is used as the tool it was meant to be, to help protect children. This video is designed to help you understand Carly's Law so that you, your MDT partners, and your medical partners will stay unified in the fight against child abuse. It's essential you understand the information in this video. Feel free to take notes and rewatch if necessary. You will be tested to ensure you understand the essential elements of the law. Thanks again for taking the time to learn about Carly's Law. Now I would like to introduce Oregon's Attorney General, Ellen Rosenblum. Thanks, Sarah. As Attorney General and as a mother, I cannot stress enough how each and every one of us has an obligation to protect children in our state. Thankfully, today, the injuries that Carly experienced would be considered suspicious, and the child would be referred to a child abuse trained designated medical professional for an evaluation. One strength of Carly's law is that first responders need not know everything about child abuse or suspicious physical injuries other than this particular element of the law, any injury that threatens the well-being of the child. Reasonable suspicion or actual knowledge that injuries are caused by abuse must be addressed in the coordinated, comprehensive way required by Carly's Law. Your multidisciplinary team protocols must address how to comply with Carly's Law in your community. Carly's Law is just that, law. If you are conducting a child abuse investigation and if you know or have reasonable suspicion that a child's injuries are inflicted by abuse, then Carly's Law is in effect. Take pictures, refer the child to the designated medical professional, and staff the case with the multidisciplinary team. Child safety in physical abuse cases is paramount, and we all must be vigilant to ensure that Oregon's children receive the attention and intervention that they deserve. Through the CAMI grant at the Department of Justice, we help multidisciplinary teams maintain specific protocols for every community to know what to do under the law when children have injuries that are suspected or known to be inflicted by abuse. It's now my pleasure to introduce Clackamas County Sheriff Craig Roberts, who will discuss what Carly's Law requires of law enforcement professionals. Thanks, Ellen. As a law enforcement officer, I have too often seen child abuse be overlooked or handled inappropriately. I'm encouraged by Carly's Law and happy to have the opportunity to clarify responsibilities when presented with these cases. One of the most important things to remember about Carly's Law is that if you suspect or if you know that an injury is inflicted, then Carly's Law takes effect. You have to do certain things in accordance with the law, beginning with taking pictures. To photograph a suspicious physical injury, investigators must be able to identify what a suspicious physical injury is. The law defines suspicious injury, which includes, but is not limited to, burns or scalds, extensive bruising or abrasions on any part of the body, bruising, swelling or abrasions on the head, neck or face, fractures of any bone in a child under the age of three, multiple fractures in a child of any age, dislocations, soft tissue swelling, or moderate to severe cuts, loss of the ability to walk or move normally according to the child's developmental ability, unconsciousness or difficulty maintaining consciousness, multiple injuries of different types, 
injuries causing serious or protracted disfigurement or loss of or impairment of the function of any bodily organ, and finally, any other injury that threatens the well-being of a child. Do not overlook the last five, which might be difficult to recognize in some cases. Upon the identification of any such suspicious physical injury, the injuries must be photographed immediately. Pursuant to Oregon Revised Statute, photographs must be taken each time suspicious physical injury is observed by DHS or law enforcement personnel during the investigation of a new allegation of abuse or if the injury was not previously observed by a person conducting an investigation under the statute. Regardless of whether the child has been previously photographed or assessed during an investigation of an allegation of abuse, Typically, DHS or law enforcement will be taking photographs unless the injuries are anogenital. In accordance with Oregon Revised Statute, in a case where anogenital injuries are present, only medical personnel may photograph the child's injuries. As a result of this photography requirement, investigators must ensure they have the appropriate equipment to take the required photographs. The statute directs the person taking the photographs shall within 48 hours or by the end of the next regular business day, whichever occurs later. Provide hard copies or prints of the photographs and, if available, copies of the photographs in an electronic format to the DMP described in the statute. Place photographs in any relevant files pertaining to the child maintained by the law enforcement agency or to the department. Make sure to preserve evidence of the child's condition at the time of the investigation and make the photographs available to each member of the MDT at the first meeting regarding the child's case following the taking of the photographs. As a result of these statutory requirements regarding the taking, development, and maintenance of these photographs, MDTs must include these elements in their protocols in order to ensure that these photographs are being taken in suspicious physical injury cases. Remember that photos are supposed to be taken right away in the field, not when the child gets to the doctor's office. It's fine for the doctor to take pictures too, but that alone doesn't satisfy the photo requirement of Carly's Law. Now to further discuss requirements of Carly's Law, I'd like to introduce Lois Day from the Department of Human Services. Thanks, Craig. As the Child Welfare Director for Oregon, I've had many opportunities to see Carly's Law save lives. Knowledge and established protocols related to Carly's Law will help ensure that children don't suffer unnecessarily because the system fails to catch them. Oregon law says each team shall designate at least one physician, physician's assistant, or nurse practitioner who's been trained to conduct child abuse medical assessments as defined in the statute, and who is or who may designate another physician, physician's assistant, or nurse practitioner who is regularly available to conduct the medical assessments described in the statute. As MDTs work to comply with the medical assessment component of this law, a clear understanding of who is to provide medical assessments and how is essential. Carly's Law states that the designated medical professional, or DMP, may be a physician, physician's assistant, or nurse practitioner, they may be located within the same county as the MDT or in another county, or in a child abuse intervention center, or in another type of medical facility. The only requirements of the DMP are that they must be trained to perform child abuse medical assessments as defined in the statute, and they must be regularly available to conduct these examinations. In order to ensure the child's safety, medical assessments are required within 48 hours of the identification of suspicious physical injuries, not within 48 hours of the injury itself. This helps to ensure the child's health, safety, and well-being, and also helps the MDT collect, document, and preserve important and often quickly disappearing evidence. Children heal rapidly. Many times, it seems that by the time the child is seen by a physician, the injuries are no longer visible. Requiring rapid DMP assessments for suspected abuse victims ensures that children will be seen by well-trained and qualified child abuse interveners in a timely manner. Additional statutory language gives further direction to the MDT and the investigators regarding medical assessments on suspicious physical injury cases. Medical assessments must be conducted within 48 hours, 
each time suspicious physical injury is observed by the DHS or law enforcement personnel during the investigation of a new allegation of abuse, or if the injury was not previously observed by a person conducting a child abuse investigation, and regardless of whether the child has previously been photographed or assessed during an investigation of an allegation of abuse. We recognize that not all suspicious physical injuries will occur within regular working hours or on call hours when the DMP is available, so the statute accommodates that. If after a reasonable effort, law enforcement or DHS personnel are unable to have the child seen by the DMP, the child must be seen by any available physician. Every MDT has protocols that define roles and bring partner agencies together in child abuse investigations. The expectation for child welfare staff is that they ensure children in Carly's Law cases have their injuries photographed even if the injury is known to be caused by abuse, that they refer the child for specialized medical assessment within 48 hours of identification of the injury, and they coordinate with law enforcement according to the plan established in the MDT protocols. Your Carly's Law protocol should establish guidelines for DHS workers and law enforcement to use for contacting medical professionals. If a child is seen by a physician other than the DMP, the physician conducting the exam is required to make photographs, clinical notes, diagnostic and testing results, and any other relevant materials available to the DMP within 72 hours following the evaluation of the child. That physician may consult with and obtain records from the child's regular pediatrician or family physician, as allowed by statute, and may, within 14 days, refer children under five years of age for a screening for early intervention services or early childhood special education services. This referral may not, however, indicate the child is subject to a child abuse investigation. The statutory requirements in Carly's Law regarding medical assessments require the MDT to define protocols regarding physical abuse cases. Each of the 36 MDTs in Oregon have a unique set of protocols. Therefore, each MDT must consider the requirements of Carly's Law and incorporate these statutory requirements into their local protocols. Now, to discuss the specific requirement for medical providers, I'd like to introduce the medical director of ABC House, Dr. Carol Shervenak. Thanks, Lois. In addition to my duties at ABC House, I also serve as the designated medical professional for Lynn and Benton counties. I've seen the effect Carly's Law has had when properly implemented, and I'm honored today to reinforce the importance of properly following this critical legislation. Under Carly's Law, both designated medical professionals and non-designated medical professionals have specific responsibilities to ensure that physical injuries are assessed appropriately. I'd like to talk briefly about this latter group, doctors who are not designated medical professionals, and what it means when they evaluate a child under Carly's Law. As has already been stated, Carly's Law is intended to improve standardize, and coordinate the evaluation of children when there are concerns of physical abuse. Medical professionals should consider child abuse when seeing children who present with suspicious physical injuries, including burns or scalds, extensive bruising or abrasions on any part of the body, bruising, swelling, or abrasions on the head, neck, or face, fractures of any bone in a child under the age of three, multiple fractures in a child of any age, dislocations, soft tissue swelling, or moderate to severe cuts, loss of the ability to walk or move normally according to the child's developmental ability, unconsciousness or difficulty maintaining consciousness, multiple injuries of different types, injuries causing serious or protracted disfigurement or loss or impairment of the function of any bodily organ, and finally, any other injury that threatens the well-being of the child. Under Carly's Law, community first responders already should have informed the medical provider that abuse concerns exist and provide the doctor with pictures that the first responder took in the field. First responders should take pictures immediately on determining that an injury falls into Carly's Law, regardless of when that injury occurred. Medical providers have two primary responsibilities under Carly's Law. 
First, that they perform a timely child abuse medical evaluation, including reviewing pictures of the injury and any medical history. Carly's law dictates that children with suspicious physical injuries be evaluated within 48 hours of contact with the investigator, or sooner if medical needs indicate. Ideally, children with suspicious injuries can be evaluated by the designated medical professional. Second, if the designated medical professional is unable to see that child within 48 hours after being seen by the first responder, then the child may be referred to an available medical professional. If the medical provider is not the designated medical professional, then Carly's law dictates that the medical provider shall make photographs, clinical notes, and diagnostic and testing results and any other relevant material available to the designated medical professional within 72 hours of the evaluation. Please note, the person conducting the medical assessment may consult with and obtain records from the child's regular pediatrician or family physician. In either case, whether conducting the medical assessment directly or reviewing the findings from another doctor, the designated medical professional will report to the multidisciplinary team according to the protocols established by the multidisciplinary team. As every law enforcement, child welfare, or medical professional knows, properly identifying physical abuse is not easy. But the guidelines set forth in this presentation should help clarify your responsibilities and allow you to do your part to keep children safe. Back in 2005, when Carly died from abuse, we didn't have the tools we have today. But thanks to Carly's law, we have clear guidelines about how to handle cases involving inflicted injuries. To reiterate, it's really this simple. If you know or have reasonable suspicion that a child's injuries are inflicted, Carly's law is in effect, and you need to follow the straightforward protocols outlined in this video. Thanks to Carly's Law, you have a way to help ensure there are no more innocent children lost to a system because you didn't have the tools and resources to properly respond. Thank you for your dedication to kids and to making Oregon a safer place for all our children. Following this video, we'll be asking you to take a test to confirm that you understand Carly's Law. If you need to view the video again before proceeding, feel free to do so. Thanks again for taking the time to do your part.